Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, February 1st, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Turns out one of the hardest things uh, to actually get working if you're installing our honeypot is to get it exposed to the internet. The problem here is that there are so many different routers, firewalls and such that people are using. It's hard to document them all. One of the more popular ones is uh, PFSense, the open source uh, firewall. And today we do have a nice walkthrough by Jesse about how to configure PFSense to expose your honeypot. So if you're interested, uh, take a look. OAuth is a real neat authentication and access control technique that uh, technically is pretty secure, but has some significant usability shortcomings. You probably used it many times before where you go to a website and that website then redirects you uh, to another website in order to allow you to delegate some access to the first site. This is typically done via OAuth. And the problem here, of course, is that it's not very transparent to the average user what's exactly sort of happening behind the scenes. And that has often been abused by malicious actors. Now, Microsoft introduced a new concept a while ago called verified publishers, where if you want to participate and want to uh, have your app have access to some Microsoft resources based on your customers' credentials, then, well, you can get yourself verified by Microsoft and the simple sort of famous blue check mark idea where Microsoft will verify who you are so your customers can trust these redirects. The problem is that apparently attackers uh, now manage to get a hold of some existing accounts that had this verified publisher label and according to a blog post by Proofpoint are abusing uh, this added trust now in order to make their OAuth phishing campaigns more plausible. This is really a fairly complex sort of user education issue. The problem is that the privileges that you grant on the other websites are often not really that transparent and people just click OK. It's also not always that obvious which website you're actually being redirected to. Maybe do some exercises, maybe show some examples here to your users so they kind of know what to look out for. And of course, particularly when it comes to, for example, uh, Microsoft uh, accounts, as an administrator of corporate accounts, you can also just blanket uh, limit what applications can be registered. So that's sometimes a little bit uh, drastic, but probably the only thing that will keep you somewhat safe here. And as we have newer and better security protocols, one of the risks that remains is downgrade attacks, where an attacker takes advantage of the fact that many systems stay backward compatible and the victim may be tricked into using an older, less secure protocol. That also applies to credit cards. One thing a few years back that uh, has been observed is as retailers uh, acquired uh, credit card terminals that encrypted the credit card data in the actual uh, reader, so it was no longer accessible to malware running on the point of sale system. Some malware, for example, disabled those readers and then forced the cashier to enter the credit card into the point of sale system manually, which of course then again opened it up uh, to the attacker. Similar things now apparently happen according to a blog post by Kaspersky on SecureList with contactless credit card transactions. Contactless credit card transactions are often more secure. They can use tokenization, they can use encryption, but uh, what malware apparently is doing is that they again just 
block access to the contactless credit card reader and then the victim is again you know forced to swipe the card and of course many cards are still backwards compatible in that they even allow you to use a magnetic strip in order to interface with the point of sale system which of course then transmits the credit card number in the clear again as a consumer this can be difficult to defend against and actually i would say don't really worry too much about it that's why you usually at least here in the us uh, don't carry any liability the credit card company will uh, refund you however if you are a merchant and uh, you operate the point of sale systems certainly uh, maybe a good idea to uh, let uh, cashiers and so know you or maybe alert you if uh, the terminal offer sudden doesn't respond as it's used to and even better maybe look into if there's some logging available to figure out if all of a sudden you have a large number of swiped transaction and uh, no more contactless payments and then we have an interesting tool that's sort of a little bit offered here as an attack tool, but I think it has some uh, real important defensive uh, purposes as well. The name of the tool is uh, Time Exception, uh, was uh, published uh, on GitHub by uh, Daniel Santos. And the idea behind the tool is to detect any directories that are not covered by anti-malware. You probably know that sometimes in order to run a particular tool, run some software, it may ask you, hey, I don't want this particular directory be scanned by anti-malware. And it can be sometimes difficult to uh, really sort of inventory all of these directories and then easily you're left behind with blind spots here that can be exploited. We have seen this a few times in the past uh, with vulnerabilities in critical software. Well, the trick that time exception here uses, which uh, is sort of in the name, that any uh, directories that are covered by antivirus, well, it will typically be a little bit slower to at least write files to those directories because antivirus will first inspect it. So what the tool basically does is it attempts to distinguish between uh, directories that are covered, not covered by looking for these subtle differences in a write speed. It's uh, offered as a proof of concept at this point. So no idea how good it is, but uh, an interesting idea at least uh, to sort of find uh, these uh, blind spots. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.